Welcome to Zyro. In this video, I'll explain and show what does Blender soft body settings do. You can skip to these timestamps if you don't want to watch the whole video. Also, for only $5 of support on Patreon, I can make a soft body simulation just for you. It can be any word or any color or any different idea you like. Plus, you can get all of the Blender files I use this on channel for only $1 from Patreon and your name will also be displayed here. Link in the description. Thanks! First of all, soft body physics uses a mechanic called the mass spring damper. When you run the physics simulation, the mesh becomes dots and in between them become springs and dampers. The edges step affect how these springs and dampers act. If you are interested, I can explain how these simulations work on another video. Let's start with push and pull. Pull is how much the edges are allowed to stretch. A low volume means an elastic material and a high volume means a stiffer material that resists being pulled apart. 0.5 is the default for this value. I get 0.01 for the first one because giving 0 doesn't work at all. Also, 0.999 kinda jumps randomly so avoid using them. Push is how much the soft body resists being cramped together, like a compression spring. You can use low volumes for cloth or high volumes for stiffer materials. Different combinations of push and pull can create interesting results like these. Damping is the friction for edge springs. Higher values dampen the push-pull effect and soften the simulation. Plastic value causes permanent deformation. Higher values mean it could be deformed more easily. If you don't want any deformation, you can leave this as zero. Bending is what makes the soft body bend or squeeze. This option creates these virtual spring connections. Higher the value is, it becomes more difficult for these springs to squish. Stiffness is the resist of deformation. That means stiffer objects are less flexible. Stiffness and bending looks like the same, but they actually aren't. You can't create great soft body simulations without bending, because it would collapse. But as they are the part of the same formula, they can both affect the solution and cause similar results. When a soft body collides with another, there is a great chance that it looks like this. Don't worry, that's because our cube doesn't really know where to check while colliding. Edge checks for the edges of the soft body mesh while colliding. Works best for simple and flat surfaces. It is dampening and pretty stable. Face checks for any portion of the face of the soft body mesh while colliding. This works best for more complex scenes and meshes, but it will need more computing power. Although the bad part is this option can cause the simulation to jitter at all because it doesn't have any dampening. Length is used for inflating or deflating the edges. This value is given in percentage so zero disables this function and 100% means no change, so the body keeps all of its size. Subdivision also affects soft body physics. You can add more subdivision to an object to add more detail, but adding subdivisions bring those virtual connections closer to each other and affects results. Also, after some point, adding more subdivisions doesn't do anything but slow down the simulation. Aerodynamics This might be important because in soft body simulations, we generally simulate falling objects. This causes them to have air friction, making this simulation more realistic. Simple causes the edges to experience a drag force. And lift causes them to receive a lift force. Blender Manual recommends using 30 as the factor for finding what is best for you. Self collusion prevents the soft body from intersecting with itself. It surrounds every vertex with a virtual ball that cannot be penetrated. The diameter of this ball is defined by the ball size. The elasticity is defined by the stiffness. And how other vertices will react is defined by the dampening. A low volume slows down if something gets too close, and a high volume repulses it. Also, there are several calculation types. Average works well with evenly distributed vertices. It works by calculating the average length of all edges and then multiplying with the ball size. In manual mode, the ball size directly sets the ball size. In maximal minimal, the ball size is as large as the largest or the smallest spring length multiplied with the ball size. Average minimum maximum is the average of the largest and the smallest spring length multiplied with the ball size. 
You should enable go if you want to move your soft body however you like, maybe with curves, paths or parents. Enabling goal means there is a certain end position for the vertices. In the settings tab there is stiffness and dampening. Stiffness determines how much the object will stick to its path. Lower the value is, more flexible attachment to the goal. Dampening is the friction on the path. It makes the movement across the path more realistic. Strength is, well, the strength of the goal for all of the vertices. Like, when you use a vertex group to animate more goals together, you can use maximum and minimum strengths to make them a little bit different. But I think I should make a tutorial for the goal. Now the most essential tab, the object tab. Generally, standard values do the job, but sometimes, maybe for more complex scenes, we might need to change some settings. Mass is the mass value for the vertices that I talked about in the beginning. It makes the inertia larger, so it slows down the acceleration. But don't forget, gravity is constant regardless of mass. Friction is the friction value for the area. The larger it is, harder the movement becomes. If you want to use an object that mass is not equally distributed, you can paint weights and use it from the control point. In the field weights tab, you can control how much every force affects the object. For example, you can make the gravity ineffective by setting it zero to make your object fly. In the simulation tab, you can make the simulation run faster or slower to make it more realistic sometimes, or even you can use it to add a slow motion effect. Now the solver tab. Simulation steps are how often the soft body checks for collisions per frame. In the step size, there are minimum step, maximum step and auto step. Minimum step is the minimum simulation steps per frame. If this is high, the soft body might miss fast moving collisions. And like the minimum step, maximum step is the maximum simulation steps per frame. Auto step uses velocities for setting the step sizes automatically. This generally works fine. Error limit is the quality of the solver solution. This is important because it defines how precise the solver should check for collisions. If there is any errors or jittering on your simulation, you might need to lower this value. Diagnostics is just for printing the performance to the console. I don't think you might need to use this so often. <laughs> Actually, I never did. Helpers is for controlling how Blender will manage the soft body intersections. Choke slows down a vertex after it penetrates. and fuzzy is the accuracy of the collusion for intersecting objects. There is also a catch tab, but I will make a whole new video on it, because baking simulations is not just special for soft body physics. I will probably continue these series with rigid body simulations, so talking about the same thing might be boring. You can always subscribe to my channel for not missing it. Also, this was my first video on YouTube, and I hope I made you understand what every setting does. Yeah, you could just read the Blender manual, but seeing the results visually and listening someone talks generally improve learning. I put a lot of work and render time on this video. But if you're here at the end of this video, then thank you so much. I hope I can see you the next video.